Sneakers and Cleats, the podcast. Let's get to the UNLV controversy here. So, something that I think we all saw coming, not this particular case, but like these sorts of controversies, um, finally reared its ugly head this week. So, for those who haven't heard of it, I'm, let me just sum this up in as, as plainly as I can. Matthew Sluka is the starting quarterback over at UNLV. He transferred in this offseason from Holy Cross. He was allegedly promised verbally, verbally, $100,000 in NIL money from assistant coach and offensive coordinator Brendan Marion. Sluka's agent never got this in writing, never got a payment up front, <laughs> only receiving a $3,000 stipend for moving costs. Now, three games in, 3-0, and they've beat Houston, they've beat Kansas. Sluka's side is saying that they were lied to, the NIL collective went back on the deal, they never got any uh, of the money that they were verbally promised. UNLV saying they never did that, in that UNLV started uh, 3-0, and Sluka's agent went to the NIL Collective and started making monetary demands, and they said threats, in order to continue to play. Putting it plainly, just like in uh, that movie with uh, uh, Zach Galifianakis and Will Ferrell, get your brooms out, because it's a mess. <laughs> this whole thing is a freaking mess. And it just shows you kind of what world we live in now this would never have happened years ago it, or it it's over money at least it didn't happen over money to the extent that we know or the to the extent that we see it happening now like maybe you know someone gets wronged by a coach and they redshirt that season and they transfer out that happens all the time but to see the ugliness of college football right now on full display when you have these you know 20 year old kids um just trying to compete. I mean, we don't know who's right and who's wrong right. in this situation, but it's, it's just ugly. It's possible bo- that both are, you know, there. there's some truth on both sides, Correct. right? right. I mean, if the kid went from Holy Cross to UNLV, he was promised probably something, right? And given the going rate for really good quarterbacks in the country, I mean, it's a lot more than 100 It's girl. feasible that $100,000 could have been promised to him. It's right. feasible, 100%. From an athlete's perspective, someone who played college athletics, I know it wasn't at this level, it was at a Division II level, but still, from an athlete's perspective, there's no amount of money that you could have promised me and reneged on that I would have quit. Especially if I'm 3 0. Like, it's not about the 3 0, it's not about the money, it's about the guys in the locker room. Like, there's no coach, there's, no, there's nothing that a coach could have done to me to where I would have. I, I don't want to say nothing. There's very few things that a coach could have done to me where, to where I would have said, F you guys, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. Sorry about all my brothers in the locker room. Sorry for the hundred guys in there that I'm disappointing now. But it's about me. That's not why you play team sports. That's not why football is the greatest team game in the world because you don't do that. It's not a me sport. And that's what I hate about NIL now is it's making it me. Right. But that's the problem between, you know, comparing errors to in this particular case, because if money had been a part of the equation, then the money starts doing different things to people. And if you're talking about a 17 or 18 year old kid with this money, I mean, I shudder to think what I would have been doing at that age with that much money in my back pocket. And I've had some conversations with pro athletes that now that were going through the NIL thing the first time, and they talked about how weird that was. Like, all of a sudden, you went from having nothing to having all of it. And it it does. I mean, it it would be hard for an adult to have to process or somebody who's, you know, my frontal lobe's still a work in progress. I don't know how these kids are actually having to do it. But so, you know, the dynamic might have been different when you were playing if there was money on the table and all of a sudden somebody's in your ear going – Gee, Matt, you're a hell of a ball player, and yeah, your team's three and zero, but you're only making ten thousand here. Maybe I can get you thirty thousand down the street. But you have to Why are you going to go put? Yeah, well, so what? If you're still getting paid, who cares? I mean, at, at some point, you know, that's going to factor. It's going to weigh on your decision to whether player or to not to play. Look, I don't want to defend this kid. Because I know exactly what you're saying, and that's in my heart too. It's like I can't believe you would duke out on your guys like this when you've got, you know, there's going to be money to be made. The other side of it is, 
if you were promised something and they didn't deliver, well then verbally or written to me, it's like, if you were promised, then they should deliver. So we have to at least consider that that's a possibility as well. And then beyond that too, if you're this kid and you have a skill set and you've guided your team into the top 25, again, I'm not saying that I would have done this, but some, if you've already got an agent, somebody is thinking about these things. Like your self-preservation, you're going to make more money playing college football than you're going to make when you get your degree and get out and find a job. So in these games, there's only 10 or 12 of them every single year, you know, and you can get hurt and it can be done in, in a twinkling of an eye. I mean, again, when you put the money factor into this and it's more than just going to college for free. This is exactly what you're going to get, and it's going to get a lot worse. Matt Sluga's agent also freaking sucks. Who doesn't get a contract? <laughs> like, and right. who doesn't get some, or, like, he's, or doesn't he's get more hor- money, right? He's I horrible. Mean, I mean, but, Frank Harris got a million-dollar offer to go to Oregon yeah. last year before he played here, and he didn't go because it wasn't about the money here, and he knew he was making good money here, but he, knew he wasn't going to leave his guys. But guys like Frank Harris – are a dime a dozen. I, I can't Frank say... Frank Harris and Matt Lucas situations are obviously different. 100%. Well. But I'm not saying, like, if... if I know me, if I had been Frank Harris and had that opportunity, I would have said, I love you, UTSA. Thank you for all you've done for me. <laughs> but I'm going to be an Oregon duck. See this, you later. Well, this, all, this would have been like if Frank went to Oregon for a million-dollar offer, and they said, no, and we're not going to give you a million dollars, and we're going to give you correct twenty thousand dollars instead. And then he redshirts and, and is like, "What the f- right? Like, what of happened? Of course. What about, what yep. about you, Bob? Well, the businessman is in the house. Tom Guerrero. Is, hey, uh, Tom G. Tommy. And he says, hundred percent. It's about the money. We didn't have these issues before. Kids were getting paid. What happened about education first? That's quaint, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> right. All right. Um, <laughs> education. Is ne- was never first. Yeah. It's, it's, ba- it's, it's, a, it's another professional football league is what it is. And if you get the degree, because some mo- I shouldn't say some, almost all of these kids are going to use their time wisely and work towards getting their degree more than likely because of the red shirt year. Most of them are going to end up with degrees. And so, you know, I don't want to make it sound like everybody's out there grabbing money. Most of these guys, football's using them. They're using football, too, to the best of their abilities and to, to whatever advantages that they're, they're, they're being given. I mean, I just – I mean, as anybody that's put a kid through college, you know, like to me, if somebody were to give one of my kids a free ride, what a blessing that is. Not only for the kid, obviously, but for the parent that's trying to get their kid in and out. And now to think that they're getting that blessing – and all this money is like, man, the world really has changed. I mean, man. as someone who got their first two degrees for free, I w- that was enough for me. Like, I wasn't a, the greatest player in the world, obviously. I played at a Division two school and, and was never going anywhere past that. But it was like, that was enough for me, and being part of the team was enough for me. Playing the amount that I did was enough for me because that's what my team needed from me. But for me, it's always about team first. And now that the players are being put first and the players are putting themselves above the team, it just doesn't sit right with me. Right. It, it, no matter what m- amount of money it is. Like if it's $100,000, if it's a million dollars, you couldn't have paid me to leave the team. Well said. I, I, I think that's, that's, just, for- that's just me. And I don't want to blame Sluka because right. I don't know the whole the whole story Let's- here with the situation. And there's two sides in this war of words. But And I, I will always side with the player if this always com- if this comes out. But still, no matter what the amount of money was, he should have stayed with the team and played. I don't care if they wronged you or what, because your teammates didn't wrong you. Correct. Why are you punishing them? So, and th- and then you have the the running back also leaving. Now you have a D end at USC leaving and redshirting and entering the transfer portal. It's just a tidal wave of shit. What about the other side of the of the equation? Do you think uh, that his decision to leave is going to affect what other teams are going to offer him? Like next year? It could. No, I don't. But it only takes one, yeah. right? For every coach who goes, you know what? I don't like what you did to your team. I don't want a guy like that on my team. There's going to be one that will that needs a quarterback. And that's the, the way it works. The crappy thing here is that it, this all falls in the NCAA anyway. They need more oversight with this. They need in there. They have this whole antitrust lawsuit going on right now, and hopefully that'll, that'll cut, out, cut out some of the middlemen because how this all works right now is 
NIL collectives end up paying the athlete, not the schools. So if they win this antitrust lawsuit, then at least they can make schools can just make direct payments to the, to the students, and you can have some sort of contract. You can have some sort of oversight in this. So at least it's not the wild, wild west, and everybody is just taking money from everybody. Like, I'm going to go take money from April and Sierra down the road, not to smite April right. or anything like that, just using her as an example. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want, sorry. Yes, April, if you have more money, we'll so, be more than yeah, happy I mean, to take some of your money. should yes. say sneakers and cleats down there by April and Sierra. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, I, I shouldn't have shown. We, we owe her a debt of gratitude. Right? She spent so much money around here, we should I all should. be buying our cars from <laughs> I, April, Jordan, for sure. Jordan and I did. Um, anyway. <laughs> and you're off the hook. You're good. Anyway, sorry, I shouldn't have brought that up, but I was just I was using that as an example. We know of we know. <laughs> of like you need some sort of oversight in this, and the fact that there's no oversight leads to these kinds of situations, and it sucks. It's just it's a bad look for college football. It's a bad look for the athletes. It's a bad look for the schools, and it makes everyone question what the what the ethics and what the legalities are behind everything. Dude, you know. You probably are tired of me hearing talk talking about this. Probably. But when I saw <laughs> what that A and M baseball team went through with my own two eyes at the end, where the coach leaves and leaves his guys, and then walks across the street to Texas, and I, you know, heard all the stuff that was going on and the money and everything else. It's like if this is going on with baseball, I wonder what's going on in basketball and football. That was my epiphany to really what this must be like. On the football level, when nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, when there are not huge swaths of people that are watching baseball, college baseball, like they are football. So, yeah, welcome to reality, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the wild, wild west, and I just, I hate it. But it is where we are right now, and hopefully it changes in the future. That's all we got for you today on the Secret Cleats Podcast. Remember to download, rate, review, subscribe. Give us a five-star rating, tell a friend, tell an enemy. Subscribe to the uh, YouTube channels as well, News 4, and Fox SA. We will see you right back here on Monday. Actually, I won't be here. Zach will see you. Zach, you and uh, Don will be here for Spurs Media Day coverage on Monday, so that's exciting. We'll see you then.